Hello, and welcome to Open Line. I'm Starlene Stringer. Well, the North Texas Teen Book Festival is six years old this year. Can you believe that? And the event is definitely at the top of the list for young book fans, as well as the authors who write for that audience. Well, in this edition of Open Line, we've got everything you need to know to get ready for NTTBF 2020. Okay, we have our special guest joining us right now, Mary Henson, the NTTBF spokesperson, Marilyn <laughs> Willems with the Friends of the Irving Public Library, and Mandy Aguilar, a librarian and grant writer. Thank you all so much for being here. Thanks for having us, Starlene. You. You're so welcome. I feel like y'all are regulars, which you are, which we love because <laughs> you're so popular. They're like, bring them back, bring them back. Let's just get started with saying, if y'all had even had like a crystal ball back in 2015, you would not have been able to predict the success you've seen. Not at all. We had no idea. That first year we had 3,500 people and that was a complete shock. Wow, tell us how it all got started. It started with our uh, festival founder and director, Kristen Trevino, and she has been working for years to bring authors to the Irving Public Library so that um, kids who are around this area can have the opportunity to meet authors because it's very common for authors to go to New York, go to Chicago, LA. Well, Texas is surprisingly literary, so Kristen thought, let's bring the authors here to North Texas. Makes sense, and I'm, I'm sure there were some challenges along the way. We'll come to you, Mandy, for that. What kind of challenges did you face? Well, that first year, um, we had never done anything on this scale before. Um, how do you get that many authors to show up on the same day in the same place? What if no teens come? How do we reach out to the teens to make sure that they know about it? Um, there were a lot of issues like that that we just really had to wrap our heads around, but we put a really great team together and on the day of, we were, like Mary said, pleasantly surprised. <laughs> <laughs> so Marilyn, I have to ask you, what do you remember most about that first year? What was your biggest surprise? Well, I remember running up to the fourth floor because we only operated on one floor of the convention center, looking out the window, and there was a line of school buses as far as the eye could see. And I thought, you know what? It's a perfect testimonial of if you build it, they will come and they came <laughs> they sure and did. they have been coming been coming and coming for yes. years and i'm sure that'll be the same this year probably bigger and better than ever so mary i have to ask you what was the initial goal when you guys came up with this idea what did you want to accomplish really we want to get teens invested in reading and we want to encourage them to become lifelong readers young adult is very popular with adult readers as well but we really want to have something where we can say this is for the teens this is for middle schoolers and high schoolers where they can really feel like it's their space and they get to talk to the authors one-on-one -on -one, and it really gets them connected to the books that they're reading and we hope that they find some new favorite books. Oh, that sounds awesome. So what do you think is the biggest factor in your success? I think our community partnerships are absolutely key. So we work with our local schools, we work with other libraries. Um, as Mandy said, we have put together a really, really good team of bookish people around the area. And then we have other people who have said, hey, this sounds really cool, we wanna be involved. So I would say, continuing to grow and develop those partnerships has been key. And then those are the people who bring in the teens. So by um, talking to local teachers and librarians, they're the ones who are actually going to schools, talking to the kids, talking to their parents, and saying, this is a cool thing, you wanna be part of it. For sure. So Marilyn, it really does take a lot of volunteers to make this happen, to pull it off. She's like, oh yes. But it also takes fundraising too. Can you tell us about that? Well, one of the very first times that the City of Irving and the Chamber of Commerce sponsored a program called Share Tank, mm -hmm. the pitch that I made to Share Tank was for the North Texas Teen Book Fest. And uh, ever since, we have participated in Share Tank in order to raise funds for various programming because the library has become such a community resource that it takes lots of programming and a lot of funds, as we <laughs> found out, to make those things happen. Uh, in addition to that, the money that we raise through the swag shop at the North Texas Teen Book Fest all goes right back into sponsoring the Book Fest because we want to keep it free for all of those students to come. That's wonderful. And Mandy, right now someone may be watching saying, hey, I want to help out. How can viewers get involved? 
Well, the first thing, if you like what we're doing, um, come to the festival, bring teens, tell teens about it, um, sign up to volunteer, um, you know, just spread the word. And importantly, spread the word to your boss. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you about that. How important is corporate support and actually getting sponsorship? Well, the festival has been growing exponentially ever since we started it. And um, in order to keep that momentum going, um, as Marilyn said, that takes a lot of funds. Um, corporate sponsorship uh, is a great way to show the local community that you support literacy, you support teens, you support the youth um, who are our future. Um, and, you know, we would welcome uh, corporate support in uh, funds, in uh, volunteers, in in-kind donations, um, definitely um, in, in order to keep the festival growing, it's, it's something that we're going to need more and more. I love it. You know something else I love? The swag that they have available <laughs> for you. And I know, Marilyn, you've been really involved with that from the beginning. Uh, why is it so important and like, what role does the swag shop play? Well, everybody that comes to the fest wants to take something back, either to someone that wasn't able to come or just a memento for themselves. Sure. And it is amazing. And what I really like to see are the parents who are encouraging their children other kids to buy things to take back to friends and to keep things for themselves. We have some outstanding things and if it weren't for the teens to help pick out some of the objects, it, that really makes a difference. And what are some of the things you have this year? Well, we have some surprises, or at least they were surprised to me. <laughs> and that is that they wanted the return of the fanny packs. Fanny and packs all of are these back. wonderful oh colors. <laughs> and I thought, oh my goodness, if I put something like this on, they would think I was a throwback from the 80s or something. But yeah. they picked it out. That How was fun. one thing that they loved. And another thing that they did this year, and I must say the teens were very instrumental in getting them made. These little squeegees like this, aren't the they just squeegees? We used to have yeah, back in the 80s. exactly. Yeah, and so I just cool. had to wear one of them today. I thought mm. it was so cute. And then we have the book bows, and these are really catching on. What are you calling it? A book bow. A book bow. Okay, yes. that's and new to can, me. Thank you. Well, book that way, a local Texas company, hmm. and these protective book sleeves help protect your signed books. I love that because no one wants like their cover to be all messed up or that's scratched right. up or have you anything don't want on a it. Bent page not or a at bent all. Cover or something. Of course not. So we have these mm -hmm. in three different sizes, okay. depending on the type of book. And in some cases, they use them for an iPad or some electronic device. That so makes sense. They're very practical. Those are very nice. Yeah. And of course, you have the sweatshirts and you have uh, water bottle, coffee cups, all kinds of fun things. These are really neat. The tie dye is new this year. I like As it. As Marilyn was saying, a lot of these ideas are coming from the teens. So they kind of help us workshop what ideas they want. So they wanted the scrunchies, they wanted the fanny packs. They Died for the tie dye. Interesting. So a little 60s, a little 80s. Yes. Everything old is <laughs> new again, right? Okay, so I have to talk to you about this, Mary, because the numbers yes. have increased every year. Yes. As far as attendance goes, what are you expecting this year? I think we're expecting around 15,000 wow. is our estimate. So as Mandy said, we are totally continuing to grow every single year. And just the response has been amazing, not only here in North Texas and around the state of Texas, we have people coming from California, New York, Washington. We also have had people come from Canada, Mexico. Wow. We had some from England last year. How cool is yes. that? Okay, well, we're almost going to wrap up this section. We're just about out of time for this part of the show. But Meryl, I want to ask you, what are you most looking forward to in year six? What am I most looking forward to? Just the enthusiasm. The convention center just rocks, it shakes, and it, it just builds you, it just puts so much more confidence in you in terms of the type of young people that we have mm -hmm. and the fact that they're there to see what they call their rock stars. And it just, <laughs> I, I go home so excited, I really can't even sleep the night afterwards. Aww. I get, it's such a thrill to be a part of it. I love that. And Mandy, same question for you. What are you most looking forward to this year? I tell my friends that this is my favorite day of the year. <laughs> and. Um, there's a lot of work that goes into this festival, particularly the week of. I know um, there are countless hours put in by the library staff and by volunteers. And by the day of the festival, we are all tired because we've been working tirelessly all week. But the moment those doors open, it's like a, a rush of dopamine. It's amazing. And um, and I'm on, I'm on sort of cloud nine all day. <laughs> I love it. And Mary, what are you most anticipating? 
I'm a total fangirl, so some of my favorite authors are going to be here this year, and I can't wait to meet them. Look at that smile. She's like, yeah. I'm super excited. I love it. I love your enthusiasm. It's contagious, and I know a lot of folks are catching it. They're going to be there, too. And I'm sure they're very proud of what the festival has become. We definitely want to thank them all for being here, and we are excited to see what the year's event has in store. Folks, here are the dates you need to know. The North Texas Teen Book Festival is March 6th and 7th at the Irving Convention Center at Los Colinas. March 6th is Educators Day and the 7th is Festival Day. Visit nttbf.com for more information. We'll be back with your guide to the North Texas Teen Book Festival 2020. But first, let's take a look back at the fifth anniversary event. You're five, it's big. It's the North Texas Teen Book Festival 5.0, and in a word, it's big. We've got over 40 panels. Date, date for at least a year. <laughs> and great authors. I believe we have 74 authors. And attendees, lots of them. Attendance for the festival, it's too soon to tell. Organizers expected over 10,000 attendees. By noon on festival day, they already knew there were thousands more but it was even easier to see the level of excitement. Everybody needs to have a green wristband. These kids were over the moon to meet their favorite authors, discover new favorites, and get their hands on new books. Speed Dating with a Book is a really cool program where we take uh, books by our festival authors and we get those books into teens' hands because not all of our teens they may not have a whole lot of disposable income. Kids got to learn about new books from area librarians who volunteer at the festival. They each got to select a new book free to start their own personal library. Organizers don't want income to be a barrier for kids who love to read. So we want to get books in kids' hands and we want to make sure that the authors who are here are definitely going to have some people in their signing lines as well. So this is a win-win for everybody. Hi, what do you guys want to know about? The day was full of other opportunities for readers, like the author's panels and publisher's events. Here at NCTBF, our focus is really on our great programming. We've got mystery, we've got romance, we've got graphic novels, middle grade YA, all ages. We also have our publishers with special activities like a breakfast or face painting. And then of course, we're gonna have our signing. One, two, three, cheese. The chance to meet favorite authors has always been a big draw at the North Texas Teen Book Festival. So in honor of year five, a new event got authors and teens together at the movies. We noticed that we have a lot of authors who have been getting some notice in Hollywood. Authors like Angie Thomas, whose book The Hate You Give was made into a hit movie of the same name, and Becky Albertalli, whose book Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda became the hit film Love, Simon. Have you seen the new post? About the closeted gay kid at school. What? Who do you think it is? Can I call you back? Dear Blue, I'm just like you. We thought, let's do something extra special to celebrate year five. So we talked with our friends at Alamo Draft House, and they said, let's do a film festival. Let's screen these movies for everybody so that we can celebrate books, but also where the books go. With a record-breaking Educators Day and the addition of the film festival, the North Texas Teen Book Festival is certain to be an even bigger draw next year. We work with our schools, our teachers, our local public librarians to like make sure that they reach out and en encourage their teens to come be a part of this because it's just something so special. The experts agree. This is Kathy Whiteman reporting. Wow, looking back on last year, it looked so much fun, and I know this year is going to be even better. We'd like to welcome back Mary and Mandy, and now we're joined by Brittany Cossey, the Community Engagement Supervisor. Thank welcome. You. Thank you. Thank you for being here. This is super exciting. We're going to start by talking about some of the authors you're expecting. Who's going to be there? Uh, we have 88 authors this year. Um, it's the biggest uh, festival we've had. Um, some of the highlights, we have two YA authors for our YA keynote, Sarah 
Dessen and Nicola Yoon. And we have a middle grade keynote as well with Soman Chin Chinani and um, Ray Rachel Renee Russell. <laughs> Rachel and Renee Nikki Russell. Thank you, Mary. Yeah. Yes. There's 88 names. No one's going to hold that against you. <laughs> I was, There's a lot of people to remember, right? I was tempted to bring out a list. <laughs> so for people watching right now and they go, why, hey, what's that? Can you break it down for them? Yeah, it's young adult uh, books. So it's geared more towards teens, has teen characters. Um, adults uh, love YA as well, though. Um, and it's kind of set during high school years, ages kind of 13 to 18. I see. Mm -hmm. And I know another big name Mandy y'all are expecting is John Green. Can you tell us about him? Sure. Um, John Green is one of the biggest names in young adult literature. Um, many people would be familiar with him from books like um, Looking for Alaska or The Fault in Our Stars. But this year he's coming for the first time to talk about a book that he co-wrote with two other authors. It's called Let It Snow. Um, and his, the co-authors are Maureen Johnson and Lauren Myrickle. And um, he'll be appearing on one panel, and it's to, uh, specifically to talk about this book and the movie that was recently made by Netflix. Wow, that sounds exciting. Yes. And I know you have a lot of great, exciting speakers, so I want to come back to you, Brittany, yeah. and find out who the speakers are for 2020. Uh, so we have the middle grade keynote speakers, um, the Saman Chinani and um, Rachel Renee and... Nikki uh, Russell. Nikki Russell. <laughs> I swear I know their names. Um, and then the YA author keynotes are Sarah Dessen and uh, Nicola Yoon. And there are people going, okay, those places are going to be packed. All of those panels are going to be overloaded. So can you give us some tips on how they can get in on those really hot panels? Um, I, so I would choose your favorite authors that you definitely want to see because there are a lot of um, different amazing panels that we're going to be having. Um, so we'll have a program going out in the near future where you can see the lineup of which authors are going to be in which panels. Kind of plan your day out. Um, and then maybe you want to get to a certain panel a little bit early just to make sure there's enough seating for you. And um, with the keynotes, I would also recommend getting there early for those rooms. What about volunteers? I know they really make a difference yes. to make this event go yes. smoothly. So how do they do so? What do they do that makes a difference? They do everything. <laughs> um, <laughs> serious, uh, we would not be able to run the festival without volunteers. Um, they do everything from helping the buses, with the students getting off the buses, getting them to, um, in, with the signing lines, um, helping with the panels, everything. Mm -hmm. And we are always looking for volunteers. Um, and if you go to our website, ntbf.org, we have information on where you can sign up to volunteer. We are only looking for adult volunteers because we want the teens to enjoy the day. Understood. Yeah. And Mary, I know the panels. Yeah. When people get there, there's so much fun, all the author mm -hmm. panels that you have. What can people expect? I think people are going to see some NTTBF staples that we do year after year. Um, we always do some like romance and some fantasy and sci-fi. We also have some really exciting interactive panels like Middle Grade Madness where we've got I believe 10 authors in one room and it's going to be a little bit of a game show so it's like a little bit truth or dare, a little bit of just exciting fun surprises. Like we've had authors give one another piggyback rides in this panel. <laughs> we have a room dedicated to graphic novelists. Um, we have a graphic novelist lineup that was arranged by Raina Telgemeier. A lot of people are going to recognize her from her graphic novels, Smile and Guts, and of course, a Drama. Um, and then we're just going to have some like real fun surprises. We do split our panels into age groups. So we've got middle grade, which is going to be more of your maybe upper elementary, lower middle school. We've got YA age range, which is maybe upper middle school to um, high school and adults. And then we've got some that are for everybody, so your general audience. And that's just so that our younger readers who may come to the festival, mm -hmm. they may know going into a YA panel, there might be some more serious topics discussed in those panels. So we just want everyone to know kind of what they're getting into with each panel. Very smart. And so I want to go to Mandy now because Mary described as madness in some cases and piggyback yes. rides. <laughs> you better have some good moderators. <laughs> Absolutely. So every year we recruit moderators. Um, we want a, a strong moderator for the panel because they're going to ask the um, the pointed questions mm -hmm. at the beginning of the panel to really steer the conversation so that we can hear each author talk about their book um, before we open it up to Q&A from the audience. Um, teens always come in with 
amazing questions, and the moderators kind of help move things along. So we need people that can step in if needed um, and um, you know, redirect a question if necessary. Uh, it's a really fun thing to do. Uh, you get to, to read a lot to study up for the panels that you're moderating. And then you get to sit up there with the amazing authors. So it's, it's a really special treat. What kind of feedback have you received from the moderators, like their, their most memorable experiences? Well, we always have every year someone who talks about a surprise on their panel, um, a, a, an author that you thought might be quiet, uh, maybe they're a debut author, and they end up stealing the show either because they're hilarious or maybe they're really profound and they say things that really resonate with the audience. Um, it is sometimes, uh, it's hard to not be a fangirl while you're up there. Um, <laughs> I moderate a lot of panels and, and I, I put myself on panels that I, you know, that I know the authors. Um, and sometimes that backfires a little bit. There was one year that I put myself on a panel with an author that I really loved, Amy Spaulding. Um, and then I tried to stay so professional that I barely said hi to her. <laughs> I think I maybe went, you know, course corrected well, a little too, too much. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so I know y'all did had something new last year, and Brittany, that was the film festival. Yes. Will it be back this year? Yes, it will. Um, we have three movies. We're doing two on Friday night and one on Saturday. Um, the two on Friday are uh, Miss Perkins Home for Peculiar Children, which is based on a book by Ransom Riggs, and um, The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon. The Saturday movie is Let It Snow uh, by John Green, Maureen Johnson, and Lauren Miracle, and we will have authors there for Q&As. We'll have Ransom Riggs and Nicola Yoon on Friday night, and we'll have Maureen Johnson and Lauren Miracle on Saturday night. Wow, sounds like a yeah. lot of fun. Yeah. And I know, Mary, one of the big things that kids really love is to get to meet the authors, the yes. favorite authors, and get their autographs. Mm -hmm. But since you're here, we got to get the inside information, like how they can really get into the room and get an autograph. And what do you sure. suggest? What are your recommendations for those wanting to get those author autographs? Well, my biggest tip for NTTBF is prioritize. Whether you're picking which panels to go to or whether you're trying to figure out which authors to go see in the signing line, you want to pick your top choice and then maybe have a couple of backups in case the panel room is full, in case that author's signing line is full. We have to um, keep our festival in accordance with fire code. Mm -hmm. And so that means sometimes we have to cut off a signing line and wait for it to go down a little bit. So we actually tape the floors and let people know you can stand on the tape and when there's no more tape, you kind of got to go find another line to go to. But um, if you've got a backup plan, you can say, oh, I'm going to go to this author over here. And maybe they've got a little bit of a shorter line. Maybe they sign a little bit faster. So I always recommend having that backup. Also, I always recommend that people go to as many panels as possible to see the authors, because what if you find a new book that you love that you wouldn't have known about unless you went to that panel? So then maybe you just go see an author that you found out for the first time about their books. Also, we have our authors pre-sign all of their stock the day before the festival. Oh, wow. So when you buy a book at the North Texas Teen Book Festival, it's already signed. So if you're looking to collect some signatures, buying a book from the Barnes & Noble book sales area is a great way to get those. And then maybe just your favorites, you go and have them personalize your book, which is where they write your name in the book. And they say, this is to you, Starlene. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. yeah, so you just save some tears for those who get there a little Absolutely. too late behind the line. They're like, I'm never going to get an autograph. It's already autographed. It's already autographed. I love that. OK, so what else do you recommend, not just for autographs, mm -hmm. or people preparing to come? You mentioned that there's a lot of school buses that yes. pull up and they've got a load full of kids. What are your recommendations to prepare for the book festival? I always recommend managing your expectations with so many authors, even the staff, we don't get to meet everybody. So I always have my favorites where I'm like, oh, I'm going to go see that person. Um, you, you just want to know going into it, you're not going to see every single author. I also recommend arriving early and checking out everything that the festival has to offer. So stop by the swag shop, see the new merchandise that we have, go look through the book sales area and like stroll through the aisles and see a new book that you might be able to find. If you're not able to get into one of the panels that's really full, like Let It Snow or Middle Grade Madness, one of those, maybe go see a smaller panel room where you'll be able to 
see somebody new. So I just recommend wandering around and just really seeing what we have to offer, which is a lot. It sounds like a whole lot, yes. a whole <laughs> lot of fun. Brittany, I want to come back to you and talk a little bit about the film festival, yes. because how did it even come to be? Um, we started it last year um, kind of as a way to help promote the book festival and the authors. Um, and it was so popular that we're like, we have to do it again. <laughs> and, um, and so we have been very lucky to work with the authors and their publicists and the, of course the movie companies to get them here. Wonderful. And so last year when you had people attending, was it completely packed out or so people arrive early? What do you recommend for the film festival? Um, we will have tickets going on sale soon and I would recommend getting the tickets. The ticket covers the price of the book because you will get a signed copy of the book and um, you'll have the $5 drink voucher from Alamo Draft House because we are partnering with Alamo. And um, the movie though is free. That's not included in the ticket. You get to watch it for free, but you also get the movie and a little bit of also food or drink. I see. And yeah. where does the film actually take place? Where do they show it? The Alamo Draft House in Las Colinas. Alamo it's Draft House. right down the street from the convention center. So on um, festival day, if you're going to go see Let It Snow afterward, uh -huh. you just walk down the street. That sounds like a lot of fun. I have to ask you, and I'll ask you this question, Mandy, what kind of feedback have y'all received from the teachers? Because I keep thinking about all those buses pulling up and you have so many kids excited about reading books, which is wonderful. Yes. So what kind of feedback do you get from teachers who attend? Teachers have been overwhelmingly supportive of the film festival. Um, however, because they are in it um, at the nitty gritty level, taking the teens from room to room and on those buses, they give us really great feedback um, that, that helps us plan for the next year. Um, some of our, as Mary mentioned, fire code issues <laughs> that we've had <laughs> in the past with so many people, the teacher feedback has really helped us um, kind of streamline the way that we do things. Um, I think uh, by and large, all of the educators and librarians that we work with are just thrilled that uh, we have so many teens that want to come. I know that when I was uh, a teen, there was nothing like this, and I would have given my left arm <laughs> to come to a, f a festival where I saw a lot of my favorite authors. So um, I know that they're so excited about partnering with, with us year after year. And for we sure. also have an educator day just for the teachers, so yes. they love that too. <laughs> they yes. get their own day just for them. Yes. Just for them. And I know you mentioned a bit earlier, Mary, that there are people coming from all over the world yes. each year, and I'm sure this year will be no different. But at the same time, there's still people right here mm -hmm. in North Texas who haven't even heard of the mm -hmm. festival. Yes. So if they're watching for the first time, it's not too late for them to get ready to attend, right? Absolutely not. I actually run the festival's Twitter account, and just this week I saw two separate people who said, wait, I'm from Irving. How did I not know? Know about this and the way that they discovered it is they follow booktubers and we have a booktube panel and we announced our guests this year and I guess they follow those booktubers and they were like okay, wait. this is something new. What's <laughs> that's new to me. What is a booktuber? A YouTuber that talks it's, about books? It's a YouTuber whose channel focuses on bookish content. Wow. So that's something that we do that I haven't really seen elsewhere just yet. Mm -hmm. um, so we even started it super early um, year one or two, I believe, where we had our booktubers and, and we just asked them to come out and talk about creating a, a YouTube channel about books. So they, they talk about starting the channel and, and how they do um, YouTube. <laughs> that was interesting. We're all laughing about it, but I just saw this report, this study that talked about what kids want to be when they grow up. Yep. And number one on the list is a YouTuber. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Online influence is huge. Yes. And that influencer life just seems so cool and unique. And it's a good way to get young voices talking out. Right, so. and they're talking about books. I Absolutely. love it. I love it. I'm going to encourage my child to be a, what is it? A booktuber. A booktuber. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, <laughs> ladies. And thank you for being here to tell us about this year's event. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Darlene. Darlene. You're welcome. It. Oh my goodness, it sounds super exciting, right? Once again, here are the details. The North Texas Teen Book Festival is March 6th and 7th at the Irving Convention Center at Las Colinas. Now March 6th, that's Educators Day, and the 7th, it's Festival Day. Visit nttbf.com for more information. And thank you for watching. I'm Starlene Stringer. Please be sure to tune in Thursday, March 5th, for the next edition of Open Line. We'll see you then.